This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jeremy Jasper, the director and probably other things, a writer, I don't know, a, music, a musical yeah. uh, creator of the film Patty Cakes, which is playing at SIF this year. Um, I know it played at Sundance as well, it premiered did. at Sundance. It did. Um, but we're glad you made it up here. Um, the film is about a aspiring musician in New Jersey who yeah. hopes to get out of there and onto bigger and better things, uh, escape poverty and uh, many other things. Um, one of the things I found while doing some research on this is that this story is in somewhat inspired by your own life. Yeah. And I was kind of curious as to sort of how, when you're creating a project like this, you decide the elements you want to keep from your life, the elements you want to change, and sort of right. how does this amalgam come to fruition? It's a long process, yeah. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be 100% uh, autobiographical, and that's the fun part. It's like you can take all your personal stories <laughs> and kind of diary entries and kind of put them in a funhouse mirror or a blender and kind of, you know, go through your past and, 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 and pick out you know, what resonates and what works for the character and the world that you're creating. So it's it's always a collage of, of, of your own experiences, experiences of your friends, experiences of ex-girlfriends, experiences <laughs> of just people that you grew up around, experiences of your heroes, and all that stuff gets kind of, kind of mixed up together into this thing. That's an interesting thing. Um, what is it like sort of as you go through this process and reflecting on those kind of things, does it change the way you sort of perceive those events in your life that you were used as inspiration? Yeah, does yeah, it, does it, yeah. Is it cathartic? What is that sort of super cathartic. And for me, um, I always had like a chip on my shoulder about growing up in New Jersey. And it was always... Um, it was always like a thing. You have like, the, you, and a lot of people from Jersey feel this way. It's kind of the Springsteen thing. You have a sort of a chip on your shoulder, but you also have immense pride. Um, and, you know, this is, Jersey's kind of like a, <laughs> like a, a punchline, you know? Um, <clears throat> and by doing this film and putting it where I grew up, I had been gone for a while, even though my whole family still lives there, and I'd go back and visit, but I used to, like, when I would visit, I would get, like, kind of like feel really claustrophobic and sure, just like yeah. remember my sort of early 20s angst about wanting to get out but then because it was going to be the place that I put this film and I was like I just saw it in a completely new light like it became very beautiful to me it became yeah. you know it was it was like I was now I had a reason to look at it now I had a reason to analyze it now instead of me just rejecting it it was like it's a main character in the film and so it, yeah. it just it really it, uh, it it was like therapy. It was therapeutic. It was it was just a really it was like a really good thing for me to go through. And also like right when I was writing the film, I was about to have a kid, and like I was just reflecting on my childhood. And you just kind of go back and like, what the hell got me here? Oh yeah. And and being able to write through these characters about that place was. I got to work out some stuff without having to go to pay for a therapist, so it was good. It's interesting to find out that your uh, background is very heavy in music. You were in yeah. a band. Yeah. Uh, you talked about, and if you look online, I'm sure you guys can all find this information as well, but you talked about how you actually like to write hip-hop oh, music. Yeah. It was sort of one of your interests growing up. Um, and you actually came to film later. Yeah. How do you think sort of that impacted the way you approach film? Do you think of that as sort of an advantage that you're sort of taking it from a new and vibrant perspective, which I personally like? Or do you think it's been challenging for you that you had to sort of catch up in some ways to serve it? What is uh, what's sort of your experience like in transitioning from music? I mean, film? it's been a long process. So, uh, you know, uh, it's it's not like uh, overnight success. I mean, I've been making stuff for 20 years now. So, um, I I was a musician for over 10 years and kind of doing it professionally. You know, touring, making records, and all that stuff. And 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 it's a it's a really brutal lifestyle. Uh, and then I got interested in. Then I wanted to make films, but I had no idea how to do it. It seemed really intimidating. And um, I went with Ben Zeitlin, who did Beasts of the Southern Wild. He invited me down to New Orleans to be in his short film. And when I saw him working in New Orleans, it was like a year after Katrina, and they were, it was like we were 
we were on this j uh, boat made of junk, and it was like all these insane, eccentric people from New Orleans, and you felt like you were like living inside of a Tom Waits song. Uh, I was like, I love this. This is like this makes it very uh, uh, accessible to me. I was like, oh, I can do this. Like you can, you can. It was like being in a garage band or something. The way that 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 Ben was making his film. And then it, you know, it was chaos. And then it came out to be this really beautiful piece. It's called Glory at Sea. Um, and after seeing that, I was like, oh, this is, I want to do it. And I want to do it like this with people that I love and, and really like non-actors or at least not familiar faces and all that stuff. And so I spent the next 10 years writing my ass off and, 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 and just pitching on stuff and, and hustling. And then I got to make some music videos and get behind the camera and I had no idea what I was doing. And then it just grows and grows and grows. With music and approaching patty cakes, it was the first screenplay I'd ever written. I had to learn how you even write a screenplay. And that took a year or two just to understand it. And then I knew, OK, I can write songs. I've been writing songs for a long time. I can write songs for characters. That's always something that's really interesting to me. So at least I have that. Maybe the dialogue sucks, but they'll have good <laughs> songs. And so I felt like I could kind of sneak through the back door and like when we were raising money and trying to get people interested in it, I was showing people music instead of you know scenes. It just it, by being able to do that, but by being able to make music at your kitchen table, you can show someone. Okay, well, like this is the vibe. This is what this is what this character is going to sound like. This is what this character. And so, I mean, I've always been a visual person, and I had spent almost a decade directing. By that point, not directing actors, but mm. like, you know, making videos and commercials and stuff. So it all just kind of came together. No, it, it, I mean, it's interesting, too, because I, d I don't know, I mean, if I'd explicitly describe the film as a musical, but right. it is so full of music yeah. that it's, it's almost, it's almost in some ways nonstop, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. How did you sort of find that balance between film and music because it's not it's not a music video it's not a musical right. i mean it is fundamentally a film but it is so rich with that that it feels it expands the experience as opposed to just overwhelming it right yeah it's a really good question that was something we had to calibrate through the edit quite a bit um you know i we had to record a whole album, album's worth of music in pre-production. So I had all these songs, and then you kind of want to lay out the film to almost be like an album um, and know when you can use a piece of music and when to hold back and when to go quiet. And that was something we were playing with a lot. Yeah, and it's not, it's not like a conventional musical where people are just breaking no, out into yeah. song and then, you know, in, in the middle of nowhere. Like the music, because it's about musicians and each character kind of has their own genre, and they're, uh, most of the characters, their lives revolve around music. They're constantly yeah, making true. it or performing it or, you know. Um, but I wanted to, you know, you watch like uh, something like Cabaret, uh, which was a big influence on this film. And like the way they mu use music there, it's like they'll be on stage and Liza Minnelli will be singing a song. And then you break away and you have like the music is kind of um, commenting or adding another level. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, totally to what's happening uh, in, in their personal lives. And I, I'm just really interested in that kind of stuff, especially with, with a story like no, this. No, it's great. And it definitely, yeah. I mean, you could easily make, I'm, there probably is going to be a music album that comes out. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the soundtrack right, right now. This, which yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, the cast is phenomenal. I want to start with two people that I found very interesting. Uh, Bridget Everett yes. and uh, Kathy Moriarty. Yeah. Both great supporting parts. Um, first off, I want to start with Bridget Everett because she is a fascinating character. Like I had never seen her in any capacity sort of like this. Always seen her as like the outrageous comedian. Yeah. Right. Um, how did you sort of find her and bring her into this? Because I wouldn't initially be like, that woman's gonna kill it in a drama or that woman is an amazing singer. Like, but how did, how did you sort of find that and bring her into that role? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I was doing this thing called the Sundance Labs, mm. which is a director's lab in in Utah, and they bring you to the to you know Bob Redford's Magic Mountain, and you and you get to shoot some scenes, and it's this really beautiful, intense experience, and you and you get to bring actors. So I was looking for a Barb for a long time, and finding actors uh, with the bright body type that are in their early mid forties. There's a, they, that look like the women that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. There are few and far between. I just yeah, I was looking everywhere. I just couldn't find that right face. 
And then I didn't know anything about Bridget. Um, would, and you know, she's a legend. She's a legend in New York. You walk down the street and like, people are screaming her name. She's signing autographs. You know, she's on the cover of the Village Voice. I mean, she's a legendary cabaret yeah. performer. Oh, really? She's yeah. She's like the modern Bette Midler. They hmm. call her. Interesting. Um, but I didn't know any of that. I just saw her on TV one night. She was on the finale of the first uh, season of Inside Amy Schumer. Yeah, and yeah. so they shot her like in Joe's Pub where she performs. And I was like, oh, wow, like the ad rock from the Beastie Boys is in her band. This is interesting. <laughs> and then, you know, I see that face and I just, I was like, that's Barb. Like that's, that's the woman. Like that's. And she just had, you know, she was singing some really funny, yeah. crazy Graphic song. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but I think she, she did this like little, kind of chat to the audience, and like the character that she was playing on stage, her persona on stage, in a way fit with who Barb was. There was a darkness there. There was a depth there. You know, some comedians you can just tell, like, oh man, they've got something inside of them, well, and I can just, I could just sense it right away. Well, I've always proposed the theory that comedians are so good at doing drama because they understand the concept of timing, mm -hmm. so that they're really yes. good at hitting those points when yes. they need to hit them. Yes. And clearly, this is true in her case because yes. she, I mean is phenomenal in the yeah, role. Yeah. Um, Kathy Moriarty, yes. again, not a huge part in the movie, but a very important one nevertheless. Yeah. How did that sort of come to be? Because well, she, she, she does such a nice little inspirational piece to the, the plot yeah. that it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, well, so I had Danielle who plays Patty, and then I had Bridget who plays Barb, and then you need, like, the matriarch. You need, like, the sort of soul of this yeah, family because it's the structure on yes which exactly is well it's like it was great because bridget makes danielle feel like a little girl um and i needed someone who felt like my grandmother you know someone that was tough and had a jersey diner <laughs> waitress voice and you know i was lo i was looking for this character and uh i was lucky enough to do this short in mexico um, and she, I cast her in this short. Now, I wasn't thinking about her as Nana because in real life, she's 15, 20 years younger. She's super glamorous. Yeah. She's beautiful. She's got like, you know, Hollywood long, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. She's got the, the blonde hair and, you know, she, she's, she's great. But I, I went to meet with her for the first time and, and, and we're in her trailer and we're just talking and I hear that voice. And then there was just something about her that just reminded me of my own family. She's the only person in, really in the film that like really reminded me of the people that I grew up with. Not just, not just visually, just like her soul and her, you know, she's from the Bronx and then Yonkers, mm. which is kind of like being a cousin from Jersey. Yeah. And she just, she just felt right. Um, and we were shooting, and then later we we're shooting this scene and she plays this diner waitress in Mexico and blah, blah, blah. And it's sort of a ridiculous situation, but I just knew this has, she has to be Nana. Like if I just thought about her, like she's someone who could put Bridget in her place, you know? She's someone that Bridget or Barb would be intimidated by. She's someone with a lot of soul and humor and like she just fit the character perfectly. No, she's so, great. And then it just took like another year of me working on the character and then having the balls to send her the script. And I just waited, man. I sweated that <laughs> out and then finally she called me and said, Jeremy, I don't like the script. I love it. And then I was like, all right, That's we're awesome. on. Yeah. Uh, one of the other interesting things I wanted to sort of verify the reality of this that I saw is Danielle McDonald, uh, the main actress, Patty yeah. Cakes, yeah. Killer P. Um, my understanding is she was not a musician no. heading into this. What was that experience like in terms of trying to turn her in? And she's Australian too, I she's believe. She's Australian. Turn her yeah. from an Australian non musician into like this Jersey <laughs> hip hop musician. Like, what was that? It was a like? long process. We spent two years on that metamorphosis. Uh, it's an amazing. It's, uh, yeah, it's she's crazy. She's turned into quite the butterfly. Then. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, because. Danielle, you meet her in person, she's very different from Patty. I mean, she's just like, 
She's one of the sweetest, kindest, like, she's just so genuine. And Patty's pretty hard and, uh, and it's got a, a curse is like a sailor. Um, and so we just spent two years. She lived in L.A. I lived in New York. I would send her songs to learn. We kind of took her through mm. almost like rap history. And every week she'd have to learn a song. I would send her to the instrumental, like not songs from the film, like, you know, classic yeah. songs. We kind of started simple and got more and more complicated. She would sit in her closet and she would record wow. in one take into her iPhone and she would just, she would, she would have to get it from beginning to end. And so it just meant she was wow. doing hundreds of takes per That's week amazing. and she just learned to get there. Then we got uh, this incredible uh, dialect coach um, who fell in love with the project and like, then she started talking with a Lodi, Lodi accent. Then I brought her to Jersey. We like got to hang out with some people there and like she got to feel it. Then we went shopping and got her some, uh, some Timberlands in, in Times Square. And then she started walking differently. And then we're in the studio and then we brought this guy on Sky Zoo who's a great rapper in Brooklyn. And she's hanging out in studios in Brooklyn and just like feeling the vibe. And then she, you know, she just worked her ass off and, 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 and became this character. Yeah. So the film is Patty Cakes. Yes. It comes out in uh, August. Yes. Um, and is there a website or anywhere where people should go? I to find think it's out Patty things? Cakes movie. Very easy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. I hope people go and check this out. Please go amazing see film, it. Yeah. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all